continuing with our discussion of the household's budget constraint. Again, in words, we want lifetime consumption to be less than or equal to lifetime income plus whatever initial wealth the household starts out with. Right, so let's write that now in terms of notation. So as we've just argued, the correct interest rate for us to include in this calculation or discount rate in this case is going to be, uh, I should be careful. It's an interest rate, not a discount rate, right? So what we're talking about here is now consumption and savings. So uh, what matters here is the interest rate, not the discount rate, right? This is not the subjective discount rate that's in the utility function. This here is, we're thinking about borrowing and saving. So we need to be thinking about the, uh, the interest rate. So, uh, you know, what's the value of consumption at some time t now? Well, it's going to be, we're gonna to have to discount that consumption because it's in the future. Right? At time zero, we're discounting that future consumption. How are we gonna discount it? We're gonna discount it back using the interest rate. If we had uh, saved a certain amount of, uh, of money today, you know, how much money would we have had to save in order to make it CT at time T? Well, that's going to be CT at time T times E to the power negative RT. It's exactly that calculation. All right. So, um, okay. So here's our consumption. Here's the number of people in the household. Okay. So this is the total consumption of the household at time T. We're going to discount that back to times zero using this e to the power negative rt. And then, of course, we're going to sum this. I didn't write it, but we could have written from zero to infinity here on this integral. So what we're saying is, what is the total discounted value of our consumption period for this household? We're going to compare that to lifetime income, discounted lifetime income. Okay, again, discounting using the same uh, interest rate. All right, then what is income? Well, it's going to be wage times the wage of time t. Wage, of course, can change over time, times the number of people in the household. So this is household income at time t. To discount it to time zero, we have to multiply by this term. Okay, and then we're going to sum from zero to infinity again. I didn't write it, but we could have written zero to infinity here. All right, finally, the last term is our initial wealth or our initial savings, which is the total amount of capital in the economy at time zero divided by the number of households. Okay. So this is the household's budget constraint. All right. As in the solo growth model, we want to rephrase things in, uh, in terms of a quantity that's going to be uh, not changing in equilibrium. So what does that mean? We want everything in terms of per effective labor or per unit of human capital, okay? So we have labor here already, but uh, this isn't human capital, this is just labor. So how do we get human capital? Well, we multiply by A, okay? So let's multiply and divide by A, and we're gonna get this expression here. So here we have human capital at time T in the economy. And then here, this little ct, the definition of little ct, this is now a definition, is equal to big ct divided by a. So it's like consumption per unit of, uh, of human capital, actually, right? Because ct is consumption per person. ct divided by at now is consumption per unit of human capital. Uh, and we're going to do kind of the same trick on everything in this equation. So here we have a k0. Well, let's multiply and divide by a0, l0. That's the amount of human capital at time 0. And then this little k, I think we already defined it, is big K divided by al. Okay. And then finally, we have a wage here, wage per person. Let's make it wage per unit of human capital by dividing and multiplying by at in the same fashion as we did over here. So, you know, we could just write, just to have it on the slide, little wt is equal to big wt divided by at. 
So again, how do we how do we say that in words? Little ct is consumption per unit of human capital, and little wt is is the wage per unit of human capital. Okay. All right. Uh, we know one more thing. We have assumed that at and lt are growing at an exogenous rate. The exogenous rate is g for at and n for lt, um, and since when you multiply to when you multiply two things together that are growing at exponential growth rates, you can actually just add uh, these two uh, growth rates together to get their collective growth rate, and it makes sense, right? What is at? It's a zero times e to the power of gt. What is lt? It's l zero times e to the power nt, and of course e to the power gt times e to the power nt. Well. It's just, you can just add the powers. You can get e to the power g plus n times t. Okay, so let's use this identity to substitute out a, t, and l, t over here and over there. Okay, so we're just gonna rewrite now. Uh, now it's exactly the same as what we have on this line, but we're just substituting out a, t, l, t with a zero, l zero, e to the power g plus n, t. Okay, so we're just substituting in here and in, in here and not changing anything else. So I'm going to flip the slide now, but at the top of the next slide, I have this equation. So we don't lose anything. We'll still be able to look at that. Whoops. Did I tell a fib? I did indeed tell a fib. Now I will show you why I told a fib. So actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by a0, l0, cancel those guys out, and then I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by h, cancel those guys out, okay. Now what's left over, I'm going to put on the next slide, okay. So it's going to be everything here except for just no a0, l0 divided by h. Okay, so here's the budget constraint in per effective labor terms. So you can see that it's similar to, I mean, we can just say it. So it's, uh, it's the discounted consumption of the household times uh, is equal to the discounted income of the household plus initial holdings of wealth here all in per unit of human capital terms, but this is the same as the uh, budget constraint we wrote on the last slide. Um, so yeah. Okay, so now we have the utility function. Uh, we have the budget constraint. In fact, I think I'm gonna see it's on the next slide. And uh, before I talk about the next slide, I'm going to start a new video.